Americans. It's one of the most common things, President Clinton has done it before and after you, and many politicians since the beginning of time have yelled to crowds and other stuff to get them riled up, and all different types of reasons. Why do you think the press focused so much on this primal scream uh, after It wasn't a primal press. scream. The interesting thing is, of course, you travel with 50 or 60 or 100 press, especially if you're the front runner, press people following you around. None of the print st people wrote about that story. None of them. It's w what happened was, and Reagan wouldn't have made this mistake because he knew there was new. This is another thing I didn't, I should have known, or actually my press people should have known and told me about. When you plug in a microphone for a speech, there's two ways of doing it. You can plug it in so the crowd noise is part of the speech, or you can plug it in directly to something called the malt box, which isn't, which just screens out everything. So if I'd seen myself, I would have thought I was a lunatic and wouldn't have voted for me anymore. What they did, what the cable people did, was plug the speech directly into the into the camera, which for good reason, because there was enough noise in the place with 1,200 excited kids to be in a jet hangar or something with their engines on. And then, of course, the yeah, all that stuff was just like you heard it, except five times as loud with no crowd noise. The reason for the yell was that you couldn't hear anything. So the press didn't, the writing press who was there didn't say anything. And, and their editors were saying, how could you miss this? What's the matter with you? They says, well, we didn't see anything different than we've seen for the last 50 days. But then it got on cable, which played it 631 times in a week. And then, of course, the rest is history. Some of it was probably malevolence. I think there was a desire. I don't like the press, and I'm not very blunt. I mean, I'm pretty blunt about what I think. I don't. Th I, I pretty much told them what I told you. I'll give you an example of uh, just one of many thousands of examples of how sleazy they are. So it was Martin Luther King Day, and, of course, there was a celebration, uh, and I went to the celebration. And I wasn't going to speak, but I wanted to show up. and so. so the press essentially rioted. There were 100 people following me. And they were making so much noise that I had to leave because I didn't, I didn't want to disrupt the, the, the ceremony. So I walked out, and these people were running around, carrying on, pushing each other out of the way. They knocked down a Len Boswell, who's a sitting congressman. So I just I was about to get in the bus, and I st said, behave yourself. You guys have got to straighten up and, and, and start behaving yourself. They turned that into a story about Dean is angry and he's out of control. They did. That's the story. And there was also jived with the opponent's storyline. So they, you know, they didn't like me. I didn't like them. But guess what? You probably shouldn't argue with people who buy ink by the barrel uh, or who have as much film as they want. And I don't have a lot of regrets about it because I, you know, if you have to kiss the ass of people who are incompetent, what's the point in being in the job? And <laughs> but unfortunately, that's kind of the attitude. That's not a good at I, what I should have had is a really good press secretary who would keep me away from the press and do if I had if I did this again, I would never do a one on one interview. I would only do press conferences and I'd stay as long as they wanted and answer the question. But I would never do a one on one interview and I would never do an interview solely with ever with a reporter, a pencil reporter. In fact, I learned not even to do uh, Gloria Borgia did this to me one time. She actually did an interview and then cut it up and made me say something different on television than I actually had said to her. So I, I'd actually, if I could, when I was, I, I learned it, it, as a candidate, never, you know, live radio and live television are your friend, unless you do something stupid, in which case you deserve whatever you get. But people who can edit are not your friend because they write about themselves essentially rather than you. They're writing about what they're thinking, what they're feeling. They do not write about you. You're just the foil.